night stands weren't as bad as you thought. You know, I never realized the academic life was so lively. I got you all coming! You're all coming out! You're in that line! Want to have a sandwich? Gee, thanks. You're all coming out! You're all coming out! Finko is having a nervous breakdown. Can't you do something? First of all, think of me not just as a friend, but as a doctor. Tell me about yourself. What kind of dreams have you been having lately? What does he think? What has he been dreaming of? Winning the Preakness and you. Dr. Chandler. Yes. Will I dream? Pass the bourbon, please. <coughs> Dance, doll.
yeah, a lovely, what was it now? A lovely lyrical lilting name like uh, uh, Lolita. Lolita, that's right. Lolita, the minute with Dolores, the tears and the roses. Uh, uh, Wednesday, she's going to have a cabin filled by your Uncle Ivor. Yes. <laughs> yes. And so, ladies and gentlemen, with a great deal of pride and pleasure, I present to you Electro, the Westinghouse Moto Man. Electro, come here. And here he comes, ladies and gentlemen, walking up to greet you under his own power. You see, all I need to do is to speak into this phone, and Electro does exactly what I tell him to do, sometimes. But I don't see why I'm telling Electro's story when he's perfectly able to tell his own. So let's listen and see what Electro has to say to us today. All right, Electro, will you tell your story, please? Who? Me? Yes, you. Okay, toots. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I'll be very glad to tell my story. I am a smart fellow, as I have a very fine brain of 48 electrical relays. It works just like a telephone switchboard. If I get a wrong number, I can always blame the operator. Thank you. And by the way, I see a lot of good numbers out in our audience today. Electro, behave yourself. Quiet, please. I'm doing the talking. I'm sorry. That's the most remarkable thing I've ever seen. Boy, what a guard that guy'd make on my football team. <laughs> now, Electro, a moment ago you were bragging about uh, being able to count on your fingers. Do you remember that? Well, we're going to find out about that. Now, uh, do you remember how many children were born at the same time to a certain family up in Canada? Do you remember that? All right, let's see if you do. Count them on your right hand. One, two, three, four, five. Five? Well, that's absolutely correct. Why, well, he's almost human. If he wasn't so big, I'd take him for an engineer. All right, now, Electro, I know you enjoy these, and I'm really going to try to give you a nice pleasure out of these. So here you are. You got that? Now hold on to it. You may now smoke this cigarette. Go on. Oh, yes, Electro, you do need a light, too, don't you? All right, here you are. And, folks, he's only two years old, too. Just learning. How can he do all those things, Jim? He's full of motors, gears, cabs, and photoelectric cells. You could fill a book with all the electromechanical principles involved in the thing. All he lacks is a heart and a brain. If you ask me, I'd say he had nothing but brains. Well, then all he lacks is a heart. He's not the only one. Well, I don't think there is any question about it. It can only be attributable to human error. This sort of thing has cropped up before, and it has always been due to human error. And it has always been due to human error. And it has always been due to human error. And it has always been due to human error. Whoa, whoa. Oh.